power tools, let's take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly, will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this. There is no more important safety rule than to wear these. Safety glasses. Hello again. Today's little video is um, not really any turning at all in it, but hey. One of the places I hang out on Facebook is Wood Turning for Beginners, and a question came up on there which was easier to answer with a video than it was to type. So what I'm doing today, I'm making a measuring stick for getting things onto chucks. So I'm only going to make the ones for tenons. This is one for the mortises. Where I have the mortises of my various jaws. Um, and this isn't how it's supposed to be used, but you can drop it into the bottom of the piece of wood you're working and just check the size. There's a center mark on them here so that I can use that center mark on the center of the wood, stick a pencil there, and draw myself a outline for my mortise. And it's simple, it works, it's the job done. Boy, make room for the professional narrator. Arthur AI here, I will now take over the video narration as is in my contract. This video was made in answer to a question on the Facebook group, Wood Turning for Beginners, regarding getting the right sized tenon to fit the chuck. This is the range of chuck jaws that Pete regularly uses. The exact specification for your chuck and jaw combination can usually be found from the manufacturer. Alternatively put them on the chuck and get the best circle by eye. In this video he is making a single tool to measure multiple sizes. The same as he did with the mortise jig shown a few seconds ago. Pete is wittering away on the live sound track, I am not going to bother repeating it as most of it is gibberish. Once you have measured, and noted, the sizes you want, you may find you have some forced nibbits the right size. If not a square cut works just as well. After marking up you want to cut it out with a saw. Let's tidy the bench and move on a step. I can use a forstner bit, for three of the four sizes I want. It is completely unnecessary, but if you have them use them, then you have an easier job on the saw especially if you have to cut it by hand. Obviously I am not going to. Pete is wittering away on the original soundtrack. Something about this timber, apparently is is an off cut of beach, from another job. I think what he is getting to eventually is any bit of timber will do. But make it a fairly thin bit. Oh no, that isn't good. Fixing the camera to the drill press is okay, until it vibrates. Please cut to the next scene.
Pete would like me to point out that the guide is too high. But that is to get the camera in there. He is also going on about being happy that this is safe use for him. Pete has been using the bandsaw a long time, and can still count to ten. As stated at the start of this video, you must know the safe way to use your tools. And use them safely. If you don't have a bandsaw, a jigsaw, or handsaw will do just fine. Well that is it. One measuring stick. You could write which jaws it is a tenon for. Or write the size. Um. We are only six minutes into the video. You had better do something else Pete. Why not grab that bit of oak. And make a small bowl. You could use the measuring stick then. Go on. Set the lathe up. You have to turn something. This is a small bowl. So he has just mounted it, between a step center, and the tail stock. Cutting the wrong way. Finish isn't important at the moment. He claims he is just trying to find a shape. He will worry about the finish when the bulk of waste is gone. That is the shape he was after. Now he has an a bit to turn into a tenon. Offer up the measuring jig. You can see there is more to come off yet. Oh no. He is having a crisis of conscience. Pete wants to confess he doesn't normally use calipers, or a measuring stick. He just uses a ruler and pencil to make both mortise and tenon. Hey Pete. Slow down. That only took you 90 seconds. Hang on. I will make him change the camera angle. He is saying that you can see the tenon fits the jig. So will fit the chuck. I must say, he is being very good today. Normally he just measures with the lathe running. But then you would see even less. Now he has the tenon, Pete is going to finish his shape, and then use the tenon. So there it is. 
one tenon, on the bottom of the bowl. Finish cut done and he is being too lazy to sand it. I will make him put some lemon oil on it at least. He bought some last week. May as well use it. The same rule applies on a small bowl like this one, or a larger bowl. Put some pressure on the middle when mounting in the chuck, and it will probably seat well, and run true. This is a bit embarrassing, Pete is chatting away, as if you can hear him. The deal is he should just cut things, and leave the talking to me. He is trying to tell you, that this is just one option of design, you could make it for a single set of jaws, or perhaps two sets one at each end. Pete only made it for four sets, as he knows he is hopeless at losing things. By making it this way it may be big enough to find. Pete is using the Robert Sorby 3 8 pole gouge. Deliberately taking aggressive cuts to show confidence in the tenon. I think we should have a bit of slow motion, to see some flying shavings. Camera isn't great on slow motion. But it is fun. While we are watching that, if you haven't already, please hit that thumbs up icon. It really does help Pete's channel. Also if you have not already subscribed, why not hit the subscribe button. And also the bell next to it. Then you will be notified the next time I am narrating one of Pete's videos. Good news? And also some bad news. While he was fiddling around with chucks. I got Pete to put some oil on the bowl. The bad news is. He is going to narrate the next bit of the video. Sorry. Despite this, if you are already a subscriber, thank you very much. If not. Why not? Please hit that thumbs up, and also become a subscriber. As I am an AI, character, I only exist when you are listening. Just a little friction drive there. This one is on a nut. I've got other videos showing me making that sort of thing. Made a video of making that one or not. It's the same as a sanding disc or anything else. Using the mark that was made when it was originally on the tail stock. Now my centre should be good. Well, 
lock everything in place. Apply a bit of pressure. Now, this is a completely different mounting. So, speed down. Turn it on. Speed up. And it should run through. Just like that. If I was doing this for real, then I would normally have a foot of some sort there. That's typically how I design my bowls. But for this one, I'm just going to have a small undercut. But then I'm going to change my tail stop drive to a better point. Give me a bit of space. We want pull. Okay, normally I don't use this point that often. I very seldom do anything this small. So I cut myself down to a small nub in the middle there. Uh, can't really see much on that picture. But cut myself down to a small nub which I can take off by hand. And I'm just going to polish that bottom before I go any further. Okay, so take that out because it stabs you in the elbow. Shift that back out of the way. Put a little bit of oil in this bowl while the camera was paused just now. Still got a little bit of damage here from the point of the tailstock. So now we're going to take off. Totally inefficient way of using chucks, putting them on and off. Remember to edit this video and take this bit out. You won't even know that I was inefficient. Guess it. Here's my little sanding clamp, uh, sanding arbor clamp in the chuck. There is a video on my site for that on my channel. going to take a little bit more of that bottom. Just enough to remove the dent of the live centre point. Dust off. 
got more oil on there where I've sanded it and for a business. So that's it folks. This sizing gig for all of my jewels with tenon and mortis and you're completely on the wrong camera switch to do that one okay go these are the sizes of my jewels tenons these are the sizes of my jewels for mortises that bit that bit that bit that bit so i've got four different sets on there on two sticks which reduces the chance of me losing them slightly and the truth to tell is normally use these good old fashioned blue pen. that is the end of this video thank you for watching stay safe stay happy hope to see you soon